I'm going to talk a little bit about my coding boot camp journey. I'm attending a six month part time program. So it's 10 hours a week of class. I go in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. On Tuesdays, I go in from 6 30 to 9 30. On Thursdays, it's also 6 30 to 9 30. And then on Saturdays, it's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This program is through Trilogy Education. I think that they either sell the service which includes career services, student success manager, and then they have TAs. So we started out with three TAs and now we have two TAs. And then we have how I got into the program is I found the program online by just Googling it. And it was actually the first cohort. The first time that UC Davis has been doing this program, they said we would be spending about 20 hours a week on homework projects, studying. But from my experience, I haven't been spending the full 20 hours because it hasn't really been necessary. Some, well, some weeks has been fluctuating. Like some weeks, if I'm working on a more intensive project, I will spend, for example, one week I spent 60 or 70 hours because I was working on a solo project and I was teaching myself React. So I did spend more than 20 hours that week, but some weeks were slower. Like we were going over some material that was pretty easy to grasp, at least for some students. One thing about these boot camps is that all the students are kind of learning at a different pace or they have strengths in different areas. And what you can do as a classmate is you can really help your fellow students. We all sit at tables that are about four to six people. And so you get to really talk to those people three times a week, and you can even talk to them outside of class. We have a Slack channel set up. So that's a great way that we reach out to each other if we have questions. And we can also reach out to the TAs, of course, and to the instructor. So that's been really helpful. There were a couple times when I kind of wavering, like, do I want to keep on doing this? And um, the way I got through that was just reminding myself that I'm doing this because I initially was seeking out something that was challenging to do. And this was totally out of my realm uh, because I'm a, a writer and I got a bachelor's degree from UC Davis in English. So this was the complete opposite of what I was doing before. And what attracted me to it was that I was a project manager. And so I worked with a lot of developers and I loved the way that they were excited about their job and they talked about their job and they were always learning something new and I felt like I was missing that. Sometimes at work I would feel like I wasn't being challenged enough so I thought why don't I just become a web developer and it has been very exciting and I've been learning tons of new stuff and the thing about this boot camp is I'm not just learning the things in this boot camp I'm also going out, taking Udemy courses, and I'm looking at YouTube videos. I Today, I was spending a lot of time uh, teaching myself C, and that was really fun. I like that you are just having to go so micro with it. I taught myself a little bit of TypeScript yesterday, and the day before that, I was working with Vue. I'm just kind of dabbling in these different technologies to see what I like and to see what I want to work with in the future. That's the really exciting part about web development is you're not restricted. There are always new technologies coming out. There are always new tutorials coming out. There are always new YouTube videos and a lot of it is free. And this is a thing too that I have to say about boot camps is they're absolutely not necessary. A lot of people have been able to self-teach themselves the reason why I was drawn to the boot camp is because I didn't really know what to learn. And the boot camp gives you a lot of structure. You have homework assignments, you get grades. This 
boot camp was advertised as really intensive. Um, of course, like I said, it requires about 20 hours a week outside of class, and then you have another 10 hours inside of class per week, so 30 hours total. Um, and then the technology stack for this specific program was MERN. We had done some market research in the area that I live in, which is Sacramento area, and they determined what types of technologies companies were hiring for. So MERN is Mongo, Express, React, and Node. And so far we've learned Mongo, Express, and Node, and then we're going to be learning React pretty soon. I already taught uh, myself some of it. We've learned quite a bit in this course. We've learned, of course, HTML, CSS, JavaScript for front end and back end, Node, Express. We've learned a lot of NPM packages. Um, we've also learned MySQL. And what I did, since we'd only gone over MySQL for a few classes, I didn't feel like I knew it in depth enough. So I actually took the Colt Steel Udemy course. Um, on MySQL and you can look that up on udemy.com um, and then he also has a couple other um, coding boot camps which I've done a little bits of I haven't completed those um, but I have completed the MySQL one he also has a Python course which I'm interested in taking just because I really like his style of teaching in order to get the most out of it you do have to reach out and ask for help because there are 30 people in the course, so that's divided across like three total instructors, one teacher, and then two TAs. You do have to make your voice heard. You do have to ask questions. You do have to stay engaged, but I wouldn't say it's as intensive as I thought it would be. When I first got into the course, I was prepping so much because I was really intimidated by the way that it had been marketed and I thought it was going to be tremendously difficult and I was going to have to it, I was going to have to spend a lot more time learning it. Overall, I would recommend the course for someone who needs a little extra guidance, who doesn't really know what to learn or how to get started or how to continue going. Sometimes it can be difficult to continue moving along with something if you don't really have structure or you don't know if it's going to lead to anything so to keep motivated it's good to be part of the class and be part of that process you really have to take that into consideration when going to one of these boot camps because they are pricey and for some people it just doesn't make economic sense or sense in terms of time usage to go to one of these boot camps they do take six months so you, you can teach yourself how to code. You can go get Udemy courses. You can go get free courses online and you can do it by yourself. You just have to find a way to have motivation enough to keep going and to br keep breaking those barriers and to actually ask for help, like using Stack Overflow, actually asking questions on there, being really thorough in your investigation of the answer and really providing enough information on your Stack Overflow question to show that you've done your due diligence and that you've done enough research to warrant asking people these types of questions and to warrant them answering them for you. And a lot of the questions that you'll look up will already be answered whether through documentation or through research. A lot of web development is independent research. That was probably the most difficult thing for me is actually learning how to use Google effectively and asking the right questions. Like I was, I started out typing long-winded sentences describing basically in English what I was looking for. You know, shortening it, putting the technology first and then the components of it and keeping it pretty general because you don't always know the terminology of what you're trying to look for. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And that is why it's tricky to Google sometimes. In terms of 
being in boot camp, one of the things that can be very distracting is getting a lot of outside advice that may not really be applicable. So just kind of narrowing down for the first few months and really looking at the homework assignments and looking at the curriculum and sticking to that and not letting a lot of people tell you, oh, you're not learning the right technology or you're not going to progress in this field unless you do this or you do that. And they'll have very specific things and those may not necessarily be applicable. And you'll find, you'll figure that out later on once you get more acquainted with web development, which things you should listen to and which things you shouldn't listen to. 